Good day. So in this um, probably second video on Unity, I'm going to show you a couple of different things. So probably first things first, um, I should show you how to save and organize our our assets folder. Um, so I'll show you how to save uh, and then how to actually use the sprites that we've generated to create things or objects that we can use in the game and then how to duplicate these quickly and line them up. And lastly, I'll close with how to make prefabs. So in the assets, Folder. I'm just going to right click and create a new folder and I'm going to call this scenes so you can see I've got this um, number one um, that's essentially the scene that I was working with in the last video and I had to save it and go so what I can do um, in the scenes folder let's see if I can delete this I don't know if this is going to work okay no it won't let me work uh, so no worries I'm going to click file save scene as and in this scenes folder call it level one no space um, it's important to not use spaces uh, goes back to sort of the history of when there's a, a space in there the computer may or may not know how to read that so we'll just get rid of that and that will help us a fair bit I guess so scenes I might just double click on level one great and if I just go back here so I can delete this now Okay, no worries. Well, I'm going to have something different to what you guys have got, potentially, but that's okay. Anyways, so now that I've loaded, sorry, saved my scene, I can reload this stuff at any time by just double-clicking it, um, which is awesome because I'm going to ultimately have, yeah, three levels and a level select. Um, so I'm just going to go back to Art and expand the sprite sheet. So last lesson we brought in a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to delete them. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is um, just buy start by bringing in a couple of different sprites to use as a ground. So what I'm going to do is just scroll down, I'm going to try and find some ground with grass, sort of similar to this. Um, it might look pretty similar in the video, but when it comes time to you having a go, you'll notice that this one has two squared edges. This one has a curved left, and this one has a curved right, and this one's curved on both sides. So we're going to use these. So if I drag this into my scene, uh, it loads up in my inspector. I'm going to load up the left side and just keep it over there on the left so I can see it and I'll bring in the right side as well. So you can see that, that they've come in with this name which isn't terribly useful but um, we're not going to worry too much about that because we will ultimately call these platforms um, which will line up. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of different size platforms. Um, it, so it's going to be a bit of a repetitious task here in a moment. So with this um, with this middle block selected, what I'm going to do is just use the transform to change the position. And I'm going to set it to 0x and 0y. We're in a 2D game so we shouldn't really be messing around with Z too much unless we want to do sort of fake fronts and stuff. 0 and 0, just the tab button to move between. Awesome. I'm just going to zoom out so I can see what my whole scene looks like. Okay, um, with this one what I might just do is, I'm going to move that down, what do I need to change? need to change my Y to 0. Awesome, and I might as well do the same with this. Not super important, but just so you can see things line up. So with this right one selected, I'm just going to again move it away, <laughs> and I'm going to select my middle one, and what I'm going to do is just um, bring over a couple of instances or duplicates of this. So I can either just press Control D, which will duplicate that 123, uh, and it duplicates in the same spot, so I need to left click and drag that over. Uh, I'm ultimately ultimately going to be making something that's sort of seven, sorry, a platform that's seven cells wide. So I've got one, two, three, four. I need to get a couple more. Um, should be able to alt click and drag. Okay, maybe not. Uh, so I just control D to quickly throw up a few more. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there's another one. Awesome. So. I've got this one locked in place in center, so what I'm going to do is select this one and if I hold down the V button, this should s help me snap to an object, to a sorry, snap the corner or center of this object. And what I'm going to do is left click and drag that and that will sort of magnetically attach to the next object. So I'll do that again, select it, hold down the V button, I'm just going to drag it by that point and it will snap automatically. Okay, again just holding down the V. Um, if I zoom in now, you'll be able to identify, you should be able to identify what I'm talking about with the round edge. It's only subtle. 
but still, let's um, take care of the little bits as well. Get a nice polished game happening. So just again holding down the V button and this will snap over. Now you might have a bit of a gap there, that doesn't matter. Um, it's something we'll fix up later on. So I've got my seven elements and it looks pretty good in, in here. What I'm going to do is click on, um, well, I can click anywhere really. Right click, um, create an empty. Uh, and that's called a game object. I'm going to rename this. Right click, rename. I'm going to call it platform space 1x7, so 1 by 7. And I'm now going to select all these sprites, so that's just holding down the shift button. And I'm going to left click and drag into that platform. Now, if I click on my platform and click on W to move it, you'll see that that will move all over the shop, which is great. I mean, ultimately I can move one at a time, but that's pretty silly when I've just gone to that effort of producing that platform. So if I just twirl that down so I can't see the details, that's great. Um, I'll well just move that to zero, zero. Awesome. So that's my first platform. I'm uh, just going to quickly go ahead and do the same thing for 1x5 and maybe 1x3. So what I'm actually going to do is just duplicate that whole thing. I'm going to rename it 1x5. And I'm just going to jump in here and delete. Hmm. What am I doing? Sorry, best to get this 1x5 and move it out of the way. <laughs> there we go. And you can see I've already deleted one of those platforms. So I just bring this one along, hold down the V button, lock it over. Awesome, that's one by five. If I duplicate this, I want to move it down. Rename it one by three. Potentially, you might want to have a. Oops, should really fix this one up, shouldn't I? Um, potentially, you might want to go one step further and make a a one by one by one just to make it even more challenging it's holding down the V button and I'm just going to drag that up here and call that whoops right click rename can't double click it to rename it unfortunately one by one which is why I keep zooming in and around alright awesome so I've got my few different blocks so if I just twirl these down I can now essentially grab them and move everything up the hill, so to speak, which is cool. Now, if I press game, nothing's going to happen apart from I can see them. Uh, if I go to scene, I can just grab this one and move it around, and you'll see that it updates in the game, which is pretty cool. So if when we're testing, we can relocate things. So maybe I've got a guy here that I'm trying to see if we can reach by jumping that far, which is pretty cool. Um, so that that's pretty good. Now, if I go back to scene and press play, we'll see this actually starts to you know, do a little bit of a build of the game. Um, again, if I go back to scene now, I can actually get this block and move it, and it'll update again in the game. So this is where you can really test your player in action and determine where it's best to go. But then when you stop playing, it'll revert back to where you finished with it. All right, so doing fairly well here. We've created our objects. Um, next, what we might do is expand on these. So we've got 1 by 7, 1 by 5, 1 by 3. Sorry, one by three. We're going to scroll down our little navigator a little bit more. We're just going to find a solid block. Looks like this one. I'm going to bring that in. Now what I'm going to do is create some ground. So we've got one by seven. How's about we duplicate that? I'm going to re... First I'll move it. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call this ground. And I'll call it three by seven. And what I'm planning on doing here is I'm going to get this piece. I'm, there's going to be a small gap, but I'm not too worried. Hold down the V button and snap that to there. And then just rapidly duplicate a few of these. Awesome. Just clicking over the top because there's a few hidden in here. Went a bit silly and duplicate a lot. Rapidly, and I'm not sure if there's one more, but might as well give it a go. Okay, there wasn't. So I just uh, duplicate that back over. Awesome, and now I can just hopefully select all of these at once. Mm. Where's this one? 
interesting. Let's bring this into here. Great. So if I select these sprites, again I can just duplicate and bring it down. If I snap that, uh, I'll grab it by the end. Just talking to myself. At least I mean someone's listening, right? So ground three by seven. Just going to enforce the fact that these are all in my green, ground three by seven. Awesome. So if I get that and move it around, it sticks. So obviously we just need to duplicate that again for three by five and three by three. I won't do that in the video. I'm sure you can figure that one out. But one thing that we are going to do before that is um, we're going to start to actually add some stuff. So right now, in theory, if I bring a person in, the person will just fly down and not hit anything. So what I need to do with this object, and we'll start with this 1x7, is I need to add a component. So Unity is pretty cool. Um, it's got a whole heap of stuff that we can utilize. And if you're not really sure what exactly it's called, but you're kind of aware of what you're trying to do, you can sort of click on one and it will expand out. But if you do know what you want to do, you can just type it in. So we're looking for a box collider, and we're only working in 2D, so we'll use 2D. Awesome. Um, might just move this platform to zero, zero, just so we can see what's going on. Chuck that out of the way. Okay, so with one by seven, and we just noticed that if I zoom in a little bit, uh, this collider is not quite in the right spot. So what I'm going to do is just sort of drag it a little bit. This is literally just left clicking and dragging. Oh, there we go. Uh, position this a little bit better. And I want this to be fully covering my piece. So it's going to be seven really. Seven. And it's going to be one. And I'm just going to drag that down a little bit. It doesn't matter if it overhangs at the bottom, but at the top it does. And this is essentially going to be reliant um, on where my character can or cannot jump. Uh, it's obviously not six, seven, it's slightly smaller. There we go. Awesome. So I'm going to do this box collider. Again, I'll do the one by five. If I add a component, box collider 2D. Just left click and dragging to get the position right. Yours might well be a bit more friendly when working with with this, a bit, bit quicker. Okay, awesome. Uh, slight overhang, I'm okay with that. And again, let's assume that we've got everything sorted out. You don't need to see me duplicating all of this stuff again. So what I'm going to do in assets, just to help me organize my project, is I'm going to create another folder called prefabs. So if I click on assets, right click, create new folder, call it prefabs, again, one word. So prefabs are awesome, especially in Unity, it allows us to rapidly create something pretty functionally very quickly. I've gone to the effort of making these platforms once, so what I can do, specifically I've done platform 1 and 7 correctly, what I can do is just left click and drag platform 1 by 7 down to here. This will create a prefab. You can see that that's gone to blue in the hierarchy. Okay, so that means that in, that's indicating that it's a prefab. And if I do 1.5, sorry, 1 by 5 as well, awesome. That's a prefab as well. What I can now do really quickly is just drag this in anytime I like, rapidly on any different level level within this Unity project, and it's going to have the exact same physical properties. If I decide that I want to change something about this prefab, it will automatically update all of these other ones which are highlighted as blue. So prefabs are a really powerful way for us to store our content that we've created and enable us to reuse it further in the game or later in the game whilst being consistent. So I'm going to encourage you to save, so file, save scenes, and that should just save automatically in your scenes level one. And next time I see you, um, you might bring in a player and look at doing some, some programming.